God forbid. Holy ghost fire, Mum exclaimed, snapping her fingers around her head. Ajifa sat there helpless with her mouth agape, so confused about what to even say. Madam, do you know me? Have we ever met before? The man questioned, looking at them. No, Mum said, shaking her head. Good. My name is Dr. Caro. I'm a spiritualist. I don't want you to see this as though I want your money. I don't even need a dime from you. Neither am I a native doctor. It's the creator I serve too. I'm not asking you both to follow me to my place so I can provide a solution to her problem even though I can. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing her carrying. Say your prayers fervently if you don't want to bury her. I greet you, he said, and then turned swiftly, facing forward. She became so nervous and curious at this point. She immediately adjusted herself, now sitting at the edge of the back seat. Sir, did you say you have a solution to this? She queried. And Mom turned swiftly, looking at her. Ian? She questioned, giving her an ugly stare. Mum, he said he has a solution to it. Me, I don't want to die before my time, oh, she said, sobbing, looking aside with both hands in between her thighs. Keep quiet, Mom barked at her. We'll go straight to the pastor's house as soon as we arrive at our destination, she added. Better, the man replied. She loved Jerry with all her heart. She never would have imagined that he could do this to her, even though she never wished for him to die before his time. How could the man who once told her he loved her with all his heart now want her to join him in the land of the dead? She sat there, crying her eyes out, not minding the other passenger's presence. She really wished she could at least have the contact of the man sitting in the vehicle before them, but Mom wouldn't let her. She thought of other means too, but there was no way. After about an hour into the journey, the car stopped all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere, and the driver rushed down to check what the problem was in the car bonnet, but found none. Ogre driver! What is wrong? One of the passengers asked. I don't even know, he said, wiping off sweat from his forehead while the other hand was on his waist. What kind of problem is this one now? Mom, who was sitting by the car door, lamented, already opening the door. And as soon as she did, other passengers too began to alight. But she still sat back, thinking about her own life. And I have a very important appointment to meet up with, a woman said, snapping her fingers, looking here and there. Mom peeped in through the window of the car, locking stairs with her. Are you going to just sit there like that? Come down, my friend, she raged, and she immediately flung the car door open, climbing down. Take, wait for me, let me ease myself, she said, stretching forth her handbag, and then followed this bush path beside them. As soon as she left, she hurried to the man and greeted him again on bended knees. My daughter, it is well with you, he said. Sir, please, can I get your number? She asked, looking around for Mom. Oh yes, sure, he said, dipping his hand into his pocket. He brought out his complimentary card and she swiftly collected it, putting it into her pocket. Thank you, sir, she said, and then rushed back to where she stood while Mom returned after a few seconds. After much battle, the car finally started. They all entered, and they proceeded to their destination again. As soon as they arrived at the park, Mom called a rickshaw, tricycle, which took them directly to the pastor's house. Mom rang the doorbell, and the maid opened after a few seconds. They were then ushered into the living room and were made to sit. What about the pastor? Is he in? Mum asked with a smile. No, Ma, but my madam is upstairs. Let me call her, she said, and then left. The pastor's wife arrived, and they all exchanged pleasantries. Please, Ma, 
We are here to see the pastor. Is he in? Mom quizzed. Oh no, he's not. He left for an emergency meeting in Calabar last night and will be back in two or three days, she said. Jesus Christ! Mom exclaimed while her eyes popped. I'm doomed, she said in silent whispers to herself. The pastor's wife was now looking so surprised, staring at Mom and her. Hope everything is okay, she asked, and Mom immediately feigned a smile. Oh yes, everything is fine, she said. Never mind, maybe I'll just put a call across to him, Mom said, still smiling. Okay, that's better, she said. Mom got up and then signalled her to. She understood the language and she immediately did so. Ah, ah, where are you both going? Sit, let's at least offer you something, she said. No, never mind. God bless your kind heart, Mom said, and they both left. They arrived home tired and exhausted. She threw herself on one of the living room couches and started to cry. It's okay, oh, better don't mind what that man in the car told us. He's one of those gullible spiritualists who thought we would fall for his cheap scam, Mum said, sitting on a couch before her. She opened her bag, brought out her phone, and started to call a particular number. But the person wasn't picking up. She called repeatedly, but there was no answer. Maybe he's busy, she said to herself. Who is that? She managed to ask, wiping off tears from her eyes. It's the pastor. Oh, maybe he's busy, she said, dropping her phone beside her. Later that night, Mum tried reaching him again and he picked up but told her he would be back in five days. The pastor said he would be back in five days, Mum said. So, what's going to happen? She questioned, looking at her. So we wait for him, she said, keeping a straight face, and she nodded. I hear, she whispered to herself. The following morning, very early, she took her handbag with the ring in it and the spiritualist's complimentary card, and she sneaked out of the house to the address on the card. She reached, and the man was so happy to see her. He offered her a seat and food, but she told him she was okay. He then asked her to tell him everything and how it all started, and she did. You see, we will summon his ghost, he said. Okay, how, sir? she questioned. Through a standing mirror, we will put the engagement ring in a bowl of water, and as soon as the ghost appears, you will pour the water directly at it. Understood? Yes, sir, she said. He then gave her a bowl of water with the ring in it, and he then summoned Jerry's ghost. As soon as it appeared, she was about to pour the water when the bowl slipped off her hands and the water splashed on her feet instead. She still stood there shivering and then managed to open her mouth. The water! I spilled the water! she exclaimed, pointing at it. The ghost was still there staring particularly at her. She became so confused about what next to do. She turned and looked at the man with her mouth agape without even knowing what to say. And he, in turn, stood there with his head bowed. She turned, looking at the mirror. Jerry's ghost still stood, staring at her without blinking. And then she let out a very loud scream. All of a sudden, she heard the word congratulations from the ghost and then it disappeared as soon as it said that her heart skipped she rushed to the spiritualist and then stood behind him grabbing his both arms firmly from behind sir did um did you hear what he said she quizzed in stutters peeping from behind he let out a heavy sigh and then shook his head indeed it's congratulations, he said, and then shook his head again. As soon as she heard that, she came out of hiding, now standing before him. But she was constantly turning and looking back at the mirror. I don't understand, she said. 
You see, according to most traditions, when a bride enters her new home, they either sprinkle water on her feet, which signifies welcoming her into her home, or the water can be poured on the roof of the house if not on the feet, which also means the same thing, he said. I don't understand what you're talking about, sir, she said, shaking her head at the same time. Well, in this case and to my understanding, it means just one thing, he said, raising a finger in the air. Which is, she quizzed. He's welcoming you to your new home, he said. Who is welcoming who to his or her new home? How, she queried. Your lover, of course, he said. Sir, please, just speak in a language that I will understand. I don't get all these parables you're speaking in. What don't you understand in all of these? Are you a baby? He barked. Look, just go home and go back to your pastor. Maybe he can handle your case, he added. But you told me you could handle it, she said, already so teary. I can no longer handle it. As it is now, your case is way beyond me. Please run home to your mother before it's too late. Let her look for another means before it's too late, he said, and then turned to leave the room. But sir, she said, and he paused. You haven't explained what you spoke in parables to me, she added, and he walked out of the room. What's going on? she asked herself in whispers. Can this man truly handle this kind of case? I doubt it. But Mum mustn't find out that I sneaked out to this place, she added, picking up the ring from the floor. She hurried to her bag, opened it, and then kept the ring back in it, and she left the man's house without even a farewell. Mum was already before the house, pacing up and down with a hand under her jaw and with her gaze fixed. She raised her head all of a sudden, and on seeing her by the gate, she hurried towards her as she stood there startled like a mannequin. Ajifa, where have you been? She quizzed, now standing before her. Um, ah, I went to see another pastor. I'm so sorry I didn't tell you, she said, already shivering. She reached for her hand and grabbed it. She thought it was going to be a round of spanking. She was already shielding her face from her, because Mom sure knew how to fix multiple slaps on someone's face if you disobeyed her orders. She took her inside the house, still holding her hand in a tight grip, and she finally made her sit on a couch in the living room. And then she sat on a chair directly before her. Look, Ajifa, don't think maybe I don't care much about all these things happening. If you keep visiting other acclaimed men of God over this same issue, some of them will end up scamming you or even taking advantage of you. Let's just be patient till the pastor returns. I'm very sure he has a solution to this, she said. She was in tears. She was just scared of the unknown. She still didn't know what the water that splashed on her feet meant, and she couldn't talk to Mum about it, because she wasn't even aware of her recent movement. That night, she was drowning in her own tears, until she finally slept off. The next morning, she woke up to people wailing in the living room. She rushed to Mum, who sat on the bare floor crying profusely. She put her hand around her shoulders and asked her why she was in so much tears, but she didn't respond. She looked at everybody present, but they all sat there, crying with their gaze fixed. All of a sudden, Jerry's ghost appeared in the middle of the room with his hand stretched forth. Come, my love, let's go to our home, he said. God forbid, it is not yet time for me to die, she exclaimed. Sadly, but you are, he said, smiling. I am not and will never be. It is not my time yet. But Jerry, I thought you said you loved me, 
Why are you making me go through so much pain and torture? Is it too hard for you to understand that we are worlds apart now? We can no longer be together. Please leave me alone and go your own way, she pleaded in tears. You promised me forever, my love, remember? What happened to all the promises you made to me the night before I met my tragic death? I'm alone in this other world, and you too have been alone here. Isn't it better we continue together here? No, Jerry, I can't go with you. What about my mother? She would die if anything happens to me. You just go on and find rest. Let me remain here until my time is up, she said. But it's too late now, my love. Come, let me show you something, he said, stretching forth his arm. No, I'm not following you anywhere, she said, shaking her head. Do not be afraid. I'm not going to harm you. I just want to show you something in your room, he said with his hand still stretched. What is it? In my own room? She asked. But the ghost stood there with a smile. Okay then, after you, she added, and the ghost turned swiftly, headed to her room. She followed with a few steps, paused, and looked back. Mum was still there, wailing with some of their neighbours and church members. What's going on? She asked herself in whispers. She turned back, walked to Mum, and tapped her multiple times, but she neither responded nor even looked at her. Oh, God. What is this? I pray it's not what I'm thinking, she said in sobs. She was still there, lost in thought when the voice of Jerry's ghost startled her. I'm still waiting, my love. Come, let me show you, he said. She looked at Mom, and then at the ghost, and she followed the ghost into her room. To her surprise, she saw another her lying in bed. She looked at herself, and then at the other her lying helplessly in bed, and then at the ghost. I don't understand. Can you please explain to me what's going on here? She quizzed as tears welled up in her eyes. You see, you have left your body he said with a grin. I don't understand, she fumed in anger. What do you mean I have left my body? We can now be together forever and ever. I wouldn't have imagined leaving you here in this world all alone, and I can't stay alone here in the new world without you either. I love you too much, Ajifa, to allow you to remain here, he said. What, am I truly dead? She quizzed, and he nodded. Yes, you are, he said. She screamed and ran out of her room to Mom. She grabbed her hands, but it was as though she was grabbing the air. She tried hugging her too, but she couldn't. She was hugging the air. Mom, Mommy! She called, screaming, but Mom didn't respond. She ran back into her room, and Jerry's ghost was still there. What have you done to me? How dare you take my life without my permission? Who told you I was ready to die? Jerry, what in the world have you done to my mum? She asked, as tears made their way down her cheeks. You will be happier here. Trust me. Come to me, to a land where there's no sorrow or pain, he said, stretching his hand. No, I can't go, she said in sobs. It's already too late. Come, let's go and continue our love. You know, get married, have kids and live happily together, he said, smiling. Even if you refuse to go with me now, you can't enter your body any longer. Let's go before the bell ringer rings the bell, he added. What? What's with the bell ringer? Who is he? She questioned curiously. Once the bell ringer rings the bell, we will no longer be able to be together. But your soul will wander about, searching for nothing, until the years you're supposed to spend on Earth elapse, until then, before your soul can finally find rest. And if we leave together before the bell is rung, she quizzed, 
Then we will be together. I'll take you places, show you around, and treat you like the queen that you are, he said, smiling. And immediately she stretched forth her arm and he grabbed it. They walked slowly together into the living room, and then she paused to look at Mom. She was drowning in her own tears. Please, get me my phone from my room, it's under the pillow, Mom managed to say to Felicia, their neighbor's daughter, who got up immediately and returned with her phone. My love, come, let's go, said Jerry's ghost, pulling her hand. Please wait, I need to say my last goodbye to Mom, she said. She squatted before Mom and smiled as tears made their way down. Mom, I know you can't hear me, but always know that you're the best mother in the whole world, she said. But she didn't respond as usual. She was busy staring at her phone. Hello, Pastor, Mom said, and burst into tears again. Pastor Ajifa, my daughter is gone, she's no more, she said in tears. She could hear the pastor's voice faintly. What? he exclaimed. I will be there shortly. She's still around, he said. I don't understand, said Mom. Don't worry, I will be there soon, he repeated and Mom hung up. Time up, let's go, said the ghost. She turned and looked at the ghost. But what does the pastor mean by she's still around, I questioned. I don't know, too, it said. Come on, remember the bell ringer. The ghost said, and she jumped up. The ghost grabbed her hand, ushering her outside the house. She didn't want to leave Mom and go just like that. But what about the bell ringer? She didn't want to start wandering about and roaming the streets like the ghost said. So she had to follow. As soon as they reached the gate, the pastor drove in at high speed and stopped all of a sudden. More interesting episodes... Type continue in the comment section. We love you.